Hi, and welcome to another video brought to you by plcgurus.net. So hopefully you've been following along in our Networking Essentials video series, um, where we've really taken you from a beginner introduction to modern industrial Ethernet networks into more advanced capabilities and features, specifically looking at the Stratix 5700 uh, Layer 2 version of industrial managed Ethernet switches. Okay, so what I wanted to do today was look at something called DHCP persistence. So what is it? Well, as we know, every device in an IP-based network must have a unique IP address assigned to it. So DHCP assigns IP address information from a pool of available addresses to newly connected devices, the clients. Without DHCP uh, persistence enabled, if a device leaves the network and then rejoins the network, the device would receive the next available IP address, which may or may not be desirable, and it may or may not be the same IP address that it had before. So that could cause some issues. And we'll look at maybe some examples of the issues it could cause. So the switch can be set to operate as a DHCP server to provide DHCP persistence. So with DHCP persistence enabled, you can assign a specific IP address to each port to make sure that a device that is attached to a specific port receives the same IP address assignment, okay? So this feature works with only one device that is connected to each port configured for DHCP persistence. And also, the DHCP server will also serve addresses to BOOP clients via the, the DHCP address pool. So when is DHCP persistence useful? Well, you can reserve and pre-assign an IP address from the IP address pool to a specific switch port. So like we said, as a result, a device that is connected to that switch port always receives the same IP address regardless of its MAC address. So a good example of this is let's say you have a label printer on your assembly line that is connected via Ethernet and must always receive the same IP address so that it can print labels or get the information for a label from some server upstream. So by using DHCP persistence and having DHCP or automatic DHCP enabled on the printer, you guarantee that this printer or any printer that is replaced with it will always get assigned the same correct IP address. So this makes it very easy from a maintenance perspective in that you can have, say, a spare printer in your general stores pre-configured for automatic DHCP, and if the printer on the pr production machine goes down, your maintenance staff can simply go to the store, grab a new printer, unplug the Ethernet co connection, drop the new printer in, plug it back in, and away it goes. There's no additional configuration needed. So this is very, very useful. Before we head over to the device manager and actually configure this, I thought we'd spend just a couple of minutes uh, taking a look at the actual setup of DHCP persistence and just to discuss a couple of the options that we we're going to be presented with when we jump over to the virtual machine and the device manager. So to enable DHCP persistence, it's really nothing more than checking this checkbox. Okay, so it's, it's really easy to turn it on. The other thing I want to talk about here is this, this other setting, DHCP snooping. Okay, so you want to check this box to restrict the broadcast of DHCP requests beyond the connected switch. So devices will receive their address assignments from the connected switch only. And in my experience, I mean, it depends on your infrastructure and the way that your network is, is configured, but typically in the automation and the work zone, uh, I would typically turn on DHCP snooping. And then any development or any PC that wants to plug in and get online with your particular automation equipment, um, in that cell uh, would get assigned an IP address from the local cell level switch here, okay? And this is typically how I would see it done, but um, it doesn't necessarily, it could be being handled at the cell or, or even the IT zone on a server upstream. So 
depending on how, like I say, how things are configured in your plant. But in my experience and in, in the way I typically structure things, I would turn on DHCP snooping and all of the address assignment will come directly from the connected switch. Okay. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to configure the DHCP IP address pool so that if you are having boot P clients plugging into this switch, uh, you want to give them a I assign an IP address from the pool you've defined here. Okay. And like I say, we'll get into how we can set that up. It's very straightforward. And lastly, to assign DHCP persistence, we wanna go ahead and set up each port and the IP address that we want to define for that port. So when DHCP persistence is enabled and a DHCP request is made from a connected device on a port, the switch assigns the IP address for that port. Okay? so. Like I said, it's just a really a few different screens, a couple of different settings to turn it all on. But I think the advantages of using this in certain applications hopefully are very apparent now. So let's head on over to the device manager and start configuring something here. Okay, so here we are in my virtual machine. Um, and I have done an express setup on my switch. So if you have not seen the video on how to initialize express setup and get your switch configured with an IP address out of the box, I do recommend you watch the previous videos uh, in the Networking Essentials video series. So assuming you've done all that and you're up to speed on where we're at, so I'm just gonna type in the IP address of the switch or the newly configured switch that I've just set up in my lab, which is 192.168.1.245. And again, I haven't changed anything here. Default username admin, default password is switch. So maybe we'll go ahead and just resize the screen a little bit just so we can see a little bit more of what's going on here. Okay, so just to do a quick um, recap on our switch configuration, so I'm gonna go to the Express Setup menu here. And you can see I've got the host name as NAT switch, and I do in fact have the IP address set up at 192.168.1.245, and I've used the default management VLAN uh, of VLAN 1. And if we head on over to the VLAN management tab, you can see I have all of these switch ports currently assigned to VLAN one. So a very basic standard uh, setup right out of the box that you're gonna get when you perform the express setup. I have done a couple of things. And again, if I'm moving too quickly, please do watch the previous videos in the series. So I have set up these smart port roles. You can see here I have both two ethernet bridges plugged into port one and two. I'm currently connected using my virtual desktop on port 16. And well, well let's just fire up RS links. Why not? Let's take a look at RS links. And you can see I have my two Ethernet bridges and the Stratix is showing up here all on the same network. So we're doing a very basic setup just to show DHCP in action here. DHCP persistence in action here. Okay, I'm just going to minimize that. And I do want to point out my current uh, NIC configuration in this VM. I am using two NICs. Uh, this one here is what I'm actually connected to the switch with. You can see I'm currently on the .1.7 IP address here. And this guy is currently set up for automatic IP address assignment, okay? So it's not plugged into anything and hence I have the standard you don't get an IP address uh, 169 address here. Um, but that's what we're gonna go ahead and set up in this video. So let's close that out. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna go over to the configure tab into DHCP, and I wanna get the DHCP persistence configurations going here. So you can see here, I have enabled DHCP, the checkbox is checked, DHCP snooping. If it's not checked, please do check that for reasons we discussed earlier. And there is the DHCP persistence tab, um, and currently, I have no DHCP address pool currently configured, so we're not gonna be able to do anything here yet. So let's go back to the global settings tab. And what I wanna do, I scrolled over a little bit, okay, is I wanna add a new DHCP pool table. So I'm gonna call this DHCP underscore persistence. And the address that I want this pool created is the 192.168.1.0. And I'm gonna tab, and as soon as I do that, 
it gives me all the usable IP addresses in that range. So I do want to limit my DHCP persistence address pool to a handful of IP addresses that I want to assign. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign a, a, a handful of IP addresses. Some we're going to slot in for the DHCP persistence um, and assign those specific IPs to a specific port. And the remaining addresses in the pool, we're going to just use for any other type of device that wants to plug into our switch in our network that isn't necessarily slated for the persistence itself. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and make these usable IPs 110 to, um, I don't know, 120. Okay. Default router can be there. Domain, name server. Okay. We're just going to leave that the defaults and I'm going to click OK. Okay. So you can see it did in fact create that DHCP pool table for us. And now what I want to do is I want to go back into the DHCP persistence table or tab. And now I don't want to assign anything to the first nine ports. So, you know, these are going to be slotted for something else, maybe static IP addresses or something like along those lines. And you did see currently I have two ethernet bridges plugged into these two ports here. So we're going to go ahead and start our DHCP persistence at port 10. So I'm going to go ahead and click this little fly out. And you can see here is our persistence table. And I'm going to go ahead and give this the first IP and the address in that range, which is 1.10. And I'm going to save that. And then I'm, let's go ahead and assign a few more. So this means that whoops, this means that any device that plugs into these ports that has an IP address set to obtain automatically is automatically going to be assigned from this switch these IP addresses. So, like I said, th this has very practical uses in a production environment for devices that, you know, from a main maintainability standpoint, you don't want to be bogged down with in the middle of the night um, setting up IP addresses, finding out which ones they should be using. It's automatically going to find the right IP address. So let's just configure a couple of these. And it's just giving you some warnings here um, just to be sure. So it says use caution with automatic IP ad address assignment. The controller may not detect incorrect IP addresses of identical devices in the wrong position. Okay, so just giving you a little warning there um, that you, you just make sure you're, you're all comfortable with what you're doing before you do it. Okay, and well, let's go ahead. Actually, you know what? Let's just leave them there. So we have slated these four ports 10, 11, 12, 13 for DAC per persistence. So that means any device that plugs into those ports are going to get assigned these IP addresses based on what port they plug into. And then we're going to go ahead and leave all of these other ones open. And what's going to happen or what we're going to see happen is when we plug a device set to obtain an IP address into automatically into one of these ports, it's going to go ahead and start assigning the next available IP address in the pool. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So the way I'm going to do this, I don't have a plethora of, of devices here in the lab. So we are going to connect and disconnect this network interface card into the various ports. We're going to start 10, 11, 12, 13, and then we'll go ahead and experiment uh, with these other ports, 14, 15, and 16. And we're going to see that it's going to go ahead and start assigning these based on what we've set up here. Okay. I hope this is clear. So what we're going to do here, let's go back to the global settings. So really, our DHCP persistence is finished. The configuration is finished. It's, it's that easy. We just need to understand what it is that we're doing. Okay, so let's go ahead and head on over to the dashboard. Okay, so you can see I have Ethernet Bridge 1 plugged in here, Ethernet Bridge plugged in here, and those IP addresses are 10 and 11 respectively. And I have my NIC card here plugged into port 16, which is at uh, dot seven. And this guy is the one we're gonna play with. 
and plug into these various ports we just configured for persistence to see if we get the right IP addresses, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've unplugged the cable. So let's go ahead and plug it into port 10. That was the first one we assigned persistence to. Okay, so you can see it's identifying the network now and it's found something. So let's go take a look at what it actually found. So I'm gonna double click that and click the details. So you can see it works. So we have, we've plugged into port 10 and it's gone ahead and assigned us automatically the 1.110 network address. Okay, perfect. So far so good. So our persistence is working. Let's go ahead and try port 11. Unplugging and plugging back in. And you can see it's looking for an IP address now. We're plugged into port 11. And let's just give it a minute. And you can see it's found something. And if we go in there, bang, there we go. Dot 11. So you can see it's doing precisely what we would expect it to do. Okay, so I think if we, it's safe to say if we plugged into port 12 and port 13, we're gonna get exactly what we, we set up in our DHCP persistence table. But what about if we plug into say port 14? Let's take a look at what happens. So let's go ahead and unplug. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug it back in now and I plugged it into port 15. So let's take a look at what happens here. And you can see it's identifying at this point. So let's go over, let's just take another quick look at our DHCP table here. So I'm plugged into port 15 now. And when we go to our persistence table, you can see that we haven't actually configured anything for port 15, okay? We were seeing as we were plugging into 10, 11, and 12 that they were in fact getting these persistent IP addresses, and that would be irrespective of the device that we plugged into it, provided it was it was set to obtain an IP address automatically. But now I'm plugged into port 15, we have nothing set in our P persistence table, but we've given a persistence pool or a DHCP pool of addresses between one, or sorry, 110 and 120. So it would stand to reason that well, let's just take a look. What did it do? It gave us an IP address automatically still, and it used the next available address inside our persistence or our DHCP pool of addresses, okay? Is everybody seeing that? I hope so. And notice it gave me 114. I'm plugged into actually port 15, so let me close this. Let's go back to our dashboard. And you can see now that I am, in fact, plugged into port 15. Okay, so I hope this example drives home what DHCP persistence is, how we can use it to really uh, make our, I guess, our lives a little bit easier from a maintainability, from a uh, programmatically. Uh, we don't have to worry now about having specific IP addresses for our, our, our workstations on the floor that maybe need to plug into these various cells to troubleshoot. Uh, we can just set them for automatic IP assignment and they, depending on where you're plugging in, are gonna link up and get the correct IP address. So I hope you found this video informative. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do. Please give it a like. And just a quick plug for our, our blog site and forums, visit us and become a member at https colon backslash backslash plcgurus.net. Thanks for watching.